it's a uh, unusual time after lunch. I know it's a bit more difficult than other times, so I appreciate your interest in uh, user experience. My name is Marc Miquel. I come from Barcelona. I teach uh, user experience in video games in uh, University of Barcelona. And, um, and uh, I would like to share with you some reflections, some reflections I had during the past five years. So um, one of my main interests in Wikipedia is to improve its uh, user experience. This is a, uh, a desire, a wish that uh, makes me think uh, in many different uh, ways because user experience is something uh, elusive. It's, it's hard to define. There are many factors influencing user experience. User experience is uh, how we use things, how we relate to things, how we remember them, uh, how we actually think of them when we are not using them. So there are many different ways of analyzing user experience, and at the same time, there are many factors influencing it. And I would like uh, to share some ideas, and uh, when the presentation is over, to uh, encourage you to discuss them or uh, to tell me what you think. So first of all, uh, user experience in Wikipedia is very important in order to make communities grow. Uh, Wikipedia has a huge potential that can expand to the entire education community. Uh, so we are far from uh, being as many people as we really can be. And this is perhaps the most important reason that uh, supports uh, uh, improving the Wikipedia user experience. Uh, if we grow in number, we can also grow in diversity. And therefore, this might improve also the, the different types of content that are going to be in Wikipedia. And how can we improve the user experience of any technological pro uh, uh, project or, or product? Well, there is a, a particular framework or a philosophical perspective, which is called user-centered design. Uh, user-centered design is a framework uh, um, created by Don Norman. Don Norman was one of the pioneers in user experience in the late uh, 80s, beginning of 90s. And he uh, proposed several ways that every product design can be better by taking them into consideration. Uh, first, of the, first of them is uh, to be iterative, so uh, to continuously change the design according to how it is used. Uh, second of them is simplifying the task, making things visible. This one is very important. Getting the right mappings, so it means that everything is consistent once we have something that uh, it is explained in a particular way with a color, a button with a, a certain meaning, being consistent with that color and that meaning. Understanding the user needs was the main motivator and understanding their limitations. Either they are cognitive, education, and so on. So if we apply a user-centered design process and we keep on redesigning, we'll eventually improve the user experience. So this is what uh, we do in every uh, technological project, either video games, uh, um, computer software, and this is what uh, would work as well in Wikipedia. So what are the factors that influence uh, Wikipedia user experience? Well, there are, there are so many, there are many, which is uh, very good because it means that we can improve the user experience uh, by improving uh, very little pieces of, of the product, of the, of the creation, uh, starting by uh, the content itself, we improve the user experience of the, of the reader. Uh, the editor's behavior, that's quite controversial. The harassment, the, the way we talk to each other, we improve the user experience as well. The norms, how the, the norms also shape the user experience, the usability of the tools, and so on. Uh, when these factors are not tailored to the users, there is friction, and the user experience is bad. So we need to uh, work in all of them in order to improve the, the user experience. So what do we know so far? Well, actually, uh, in this talk, I want to bring a, a little bit of uh, uh, friction, a, a little bit of uh, another point of view. Because uh, from, from research, we know there are many things that are, many problems that are not tackled yet. We know for several years that 
exper experienced editors, they tend to block newcomers uh, contributions at content and policy level. We know that reverts uh, to newcomers, they drive them away. And at the same time, we know that uh, harassment is also another situation that uh, drives new users away. And these problems are known for, so, for some years, but still they are not tackled properly. Other things we know uh, from research is that there are some ideas that they work. Uh, th they work because they have been tested, like trying to get participation from uh, readers in order to engage them to become newcomers, uh, allow to send uh, minimal feedback uh, on the quality content uh, in order to engage them as well to become newcomers or to assign tutors in the tea house or, or village pump in order to uh, facilitate their uh, entrance into the Wikimedia sphere. All these things, uh, they have been uh, proved by research, but somehow they remain unimplemented. They, they do not find its uh, right implementation in order to have uh, uh, its uh, impact, uh, its most big impact as possible. And uh, unfortunately, there had been some solutions uh, which have been tested that would uh, potentially improve uh, the Wikipedia user experience, like the visual editor tool or, or the flow discussions that remain unimplemented in many wikis. Uh, one thing that something as a what you see what you get editor that it's so common in many other platforms like WordPress uh, should be by default for new editors. So, um, I'm really wondering why this is not happening. And this is a question that each of us uh, should uh, ask in order to improve uh, uh, new editor uh, retention. So why this is happening? Why do we know there are problems? Why do we know there are solutions? And why do we know there is software improving user experience, but still we are not getting as far as we would like? Well, I try to be analytical. I try to, to divide the problem into different uh, steps. And, and I thought that the, the, pre the first possible step is that there is a low degree of knowledge or awareness of the problems by the involved actors. And these are foundation, communities, chapters. The second one, there is a lack of communication between these actors that they are not transmitting the, this knowledge. So perhaps this knowledge is in the foundation, but it's not in the communities or it's already in the chapters, but not in the communities as well. And the third possible uh, factor, or the last step of this process, is that the consensus decision-making mechanisms uh, is somehow blocking these, uh, these changes or, or uh, its possible implementations. I would like you to, to reflect on which one do you think is uh, more possible. In my opinion, the second and the third are crucial. Okay, so Wikipedia has two unique factors, two unique characteristics that make it more challenging to transform it into a user-centered uh, design process. The first one is the consensus decision-making. There is no central uh, decision-making, so it's harder to implement changes, as I said before. And the second one is the outcome, the resulting product. The resulting product, it's a uh, counter center totally. So it's not center on the users, it's the user that they have to uh, go around the product. These two characteristics, which are unique to Wikipedia and are essential to make it work, they present very specific challenges in order to implement the user center design process I said before. So I'll try to propose solutions uh, for that. So why consensus decision making is uh, something uh, unique but at the same time challenging? Because in a user-centered design process, we have new ideas coming from company managers that they have a strategy, they want the product to grow, to have more users, to make more revenue. They design, they evaluate with research, and they listen to the research very carefully in order to take decisions and implement them, and they continue iterating in this process. What happens in Wikipedia? Well, in Wikipedia, we have new ideas coming from the foundation, but very often from uh, experienced editors. We have that, that 
research is in the foundation and the decision making is always in the communities. It's always in a group of users inside the communities. It's a, it's a different process. The actors are different. Uh, within a company, the one who sets the strategy is the one who finally decides what to do with research in order to implement the changes or not. In, in Wikipedia, the ones who set the strategy uh, are the communities and the foundation, but the ones who are always deciding about uh, what to implement are the communities. And this makes it more challenging. Why challenging? Because new ideas, they come from experienced editors most of the time. So they, they tend to create new ideas based on their needs, based on uh, their own needs for the whole time they have been users. And, uh, and less thinking about the needs of potential new users or, or newcomers. So what happens? It's much more difficult to set a strategy in long term. It's much, much more difficult to propose some changes that uh, not aim at the same users, but at new editors. So it's much more difficult to think to grow, but to think to make uh, happy the same community. Uh, this is uh, the consensus model. And it works, but it has this, uh, this other side. And we might need to look for some ways to improve it. And um, besides the consensus model, there is also another, let's say, cultural factor, cultural values that I consider very, very important. Uh, every now and then when I talk to Wikipedians and I listen to them, they really tell me, if I learn it, anyone can. That's very encouraging. I like very much this spirit, but that's not realistic at all because we are not the same. Users come with very different education paths, very different uh, sociological profiles. So assuming this is one of the big mistakes if you, we want to uh, expand our community, we want to extend it. We are full of uh, cognitive bias. Um, when, I, when I talk to game designers, I tell them, please do not do the playtesting yourself because you know your game, you know it very well. Uh, just uh, give it to other players who don't know your game and you really know, you really uh, see if uh, it's usable uh, for more players. Editors are not the ones more aware of what new editors need. So these values are useful for certain editors but are not useful at all for the entire community or the potential users. Um, these values are often represented in controversies. Few a uh, few days ago, actually uh, in June, I found this uh, post in, uh, in Wikipedia Weekly uh, page in, in Facebook, uh, which presented the debate, open knowledge, mission versus controversial design features uh, in Wikipedia, whether it's more important the commitment or the features because they are controversial. Well, I, I think this is a really false debate. It is a really false debate because um, editing Wikipedia should not be a test of commitment. It should be easy. That's simple. If, um, if you have a high commitment, you'll be able to overcome difficulties. But if it's easier and you have commitment, the better. You're going to do much more work and you, you're going to engage more people. Or, or should we edit with uh, terminals? Mm. There is actually the way to do it, but it makes no sense at all. So we really need to keep motivation, but we really need to make it simple. So this is why getting to consensus is problematic, because there can be groups of users or the entire community that uh, eventually might get into a close feedback loop. Uh, how some people are going to decide uh, to the interest to the best interest of, this, of these people that are not in the consensus? That was the kind of the, the most difficult questions that I cannot answer. How, how can uh, we represent newcomers uh, if uh, they are not even in the community in order to decide for technological features that would uh, help them? It's, it's really difficult. And, uh, and I know I'm getting into the danger zone and uh, this is controversial because taking power and privilege from people is always uh, difficult. Uh, so 
our real community is able to take decisions to the benefit of every potential user? Should consensus be limited to only content? Uh, should we let uh, technology to another group of people, maybe larger? Should we change consensus uh, for technology? I know this is, uh, this is conflictive, this is tension area, but we should really think about it. My proposal, or one of the solutions uh, I think that it might be useful in this direction, is to say perfect a little bit more uh, the consensus and the community, because um, Wikipedia uh, started as a, as a collaborative project without users, without roles. And roles were created when the needs uh, required these roles, content, policies. So I think that we are getting to the point that we might need roles for users, roles for community, roles for implementing uh, changes, and, and roles for facilitating this information flow. And this is why I propose uh, introducing a user experience flag inside the communities that would care for community health, that would care for user experience. This, this flag, uh, as I uh, imagine it, has uh, three main uh, characteristics or three main duties. The first one is to represent these users, these newcomers who are, already, who are not uh, in the community yet and they, therefore they cannot uh, debate whether flow is going to be useful for them or whether visual editor should be the default editor. Second uh, of all, it should ensure communication among uh, the foundation and the communities. It should uh, um, provide the communities uh, the information on, on what is going on, on what uh, is uh, the time is being invested, and therefore, uh, facilitate that they really accept these changes with research, uh, with evidence, uh, experienced editors will eventually accept that it's important to do these changes to, to favor user experience. And third, follow community stats to know exactly what is going on, to know exactly whether there is retention, whether uh, there is harassment, and communicate it as well to other users. So we need to represent potentials and, uh, and, uh, and new users in the consensus. We need to put um, these roles at every step. And, and this way, we're going to facilitate uh, the consensus to take into account uh, the, the right and needed changes in order to expand communities. At the same time, this role should be in the community. It should not be in the foundation. And this is really important because uh, uh, as I've seen, the, there, there is a distance between communities and foundation, and, uh, and this, this uh, user experience uh, flag would breach this distance. Uh, and this is why it's really important that uh, the information flow is facilitated by this role. And third, as I said, to follow community stats, harassment, newcomers retention, all this should be available to communities. So they take responsibility. Uh, there are amazing uh, research uh, papers about retention, about the effects of reverts, as I said before, but communities, they don't know about it. If uh, this information is at hand to communities, and, and by hand, I don't mean outside websites, or uh, not only uh, foundation projects, but something integrated and, uh, and put them as a goal, then communities would take charge of it. This is why um, this role would bring a sort of secondary goal to the project. We have the big goal of providing uh, the sum of human knowledge to, um, to into a place. This uh, second goal would be to give the best knowledge experience. And uh, I'm really happy that I saw that uh, um, we are talking about knowledge as a service because we are right in this direction. So this user experience flag uh, would comply with these activities and, and would really help in, uh, in bridging uh, communities and, and foundation. And with this, I'm, I'm getting to the, to the second uh, challenging characteristic in order to improve the user experience. And this second characteristic is the outcome the, or the product, the content center architecture. So we know that content is the center of Wikipedia. This is why we create it. But this has consequences. Wikipedia has grown by accretion. There are tools, 
there are uh, websites for pictures, websites for metadata. It's a universe, and, and it all revolves around content, but it's really difficult to catch up with everything that is going on. And very often we realize there are tools that would have helped us if we knew that they exist uh, uh, when we start a particular task. Okay, complexity brings friction. This complexity is against the user experience. And uh, actually, with multiple creators, can only create complexity. And you'll say, because uh, I had this conversation before, okay, but this is the power of Wikimedia. We, ca we cannot uh, stop that. Actually not, we, we shouldn't stop that. This complexity will, will continue and, and will grow, but we need uh, different ways in order, in order to tackle complexity and uh, to balance uh, the, a counter center architecture like Wikipedia it is, and transform it in a more user-centered architecture. And I'm gonna tell you uh, some ways very fast that they are usual in, uh, from a user uh, experience perspective. And, uh, and I'm happy that some of them, they are already taken into account, but it's good to, to have them in mind. So uh, there is a, a user experience tool which is called User Journey, which uh, implies dividing every part of the experience into different steps. Starting uh, in Wikipedia would be before registering, after registering, while contributing, while engaged, and re-engaging. So first of all, it is really important to realize for new editors that um, it is possible to edit. And by uh, putting in bold the edit uh, label is not enough at all. Uh, there are still uh, a big percentage of editor, uh, of users that they do not know that uh, it is possible to edit and there is new research supporting this, uh, this fact. So we should uh, look for ways to make this uh, possible. We should uh, make it more visible. Actually, uh, one of the, the misconceptions or, or the ideas that I think that we should debunk is uh, the division between editor and reader. Uh, this division makes it more difficult for readers to become editors because there are many different profiles who are uh, contributors uh, and they are not the typical super uh, power editor. There are researchers, there are photographers, there are event planners and uh, by saying uh, editor reader, we are making it a bit more difficult for this to be part of the community. So what I'm proposing, as I said, making things more visible. Uh, a few years ago, perhaps we were a bit afraid of showing that Wikipedia is a living uh, thing, but I th uh, because of reputation, because of credibility, but I think that more and more we need to visualize all the things that are going on. Um, the uh, community events uh, should be visible to newcomers because they might be engaged uh, not into editing, editing itself, but into following uh, uh, what is going on and perhaps contributing in some other way. I'm thinking about uh, the home page as a page much more diverse than, than it is now. Uh, it could include uh, um, calls to action for uh, uploading pictures. It, it could include uh, community events, topic, uh, uh, topics that are missing in, uh, in a language or translations. These are tasks that they would really call the very diverse motivations that users have because editors, they have very different motivations. So if editors, they have very different motivations, why should we all see the same page? And this is what, uh, what I mean by uh, making it more visible into the homepage. So after registering, once we have already created a nickname uh, in Wikipedia, we need to teach users to, uh, to to create content, to contribute somehow. In video games, we use something called onboarding plan, uh, which teaches uh, players uh, each of the steps that they need uh, to play the game. But uh, games are so complex, uh, and some of them, uh, they, uh, they have gameplays for 30, for 80, for 100 hours, which is not very different from uh, what many Wikipedians uh, do for Wikipedia. 
and not all they go across the same uh, along the same learning path so what this onboarding plan proposes is to divide uh, each uh, mechanic into a step so first you learn uh, to move the character then you learn to create an object you learn to shoot if it's a game about shooting you learn about um, creating tools so imagine that for wikipedia why does a photographer needs to learn about uh, a, a particular policy why should all users uh, go along the same learning path sometimes um, some of my students when i tell them to contribute to wikipedia say wow but this is like a jungle there are so many things to learn and policies and i have the feeling that that there are so many things i don't know where to start they feel overwhelmed onboarding plan helps people not feel overwhelmed because they they are carefully designed to set an order of learning for different profiles and most important no time constraints it must be an environment that is meaningful so it's integrated in what they are doing but at the same time it, sh it should not put pressure this is how a good uh, onboarding plan works so let's say that they already learn what they need to learn whether they are photographers uh, typographers uh, translators uh, whichever role and they they want to start contributing so by contributing, we, we can uh, be motivated to contribute, but if, if the system itself facilitates us what we need, it's gonna be more usable, and therefore the motivation will not need to be that high. And this is why I propose uh, providing uh, assistance or providing further actions in order to perfect what we are doing. If I'm a new editor, uh, having a, a space in the screen telling me which policy might apply to this page or uh, which other article might improve what i'm doing would really facilitate uh, uh, my process of learning if we make things visible it's going to be easier to use recognition we often say it's easier than to recall and this is especially important dur during the first days because we haven't uh, we haven't learned it so so hard so deep so we need to recall it continuously to recognize it I mean recognize it continuously on screen these tools they would uh, they would show the policies they would show templates uh, fortunately in the foundation they are already working uh, in this area in order to improve uh, uh, quality features of articles and, uh, and uh, I just remember one of them proposed in the hackathon uh, of um, um, introducing pictures from the same article in other languages in order to extend uh, the article improve its quality uh, further actions is really something helping user experience so while we are engaged and we already know how to to move around wikipedia um, there is this big problem with complexity and uh, wikipedia is good at, uh, at finding content it is easy to find uh, articles pieces of articles but it, it's not easy to find collaborators it's not easy to find uh, uh, available tasks uh, uh, based on your on your profile it's not easy to find uh, um, some particular parts of the communication what is going on in in in, uh, in the community so we need more recommenders and this is a similar idea to the, the one before we need recommenders that they make this thing easier to to find because uh, we often need to go outside many other pages and uh, the last part re-engaging we, we might leave wikipedia for a while uh, for months for years and uh, our memory is uh, is fallible uh, we have a, a learning curve uh, and a, a memory a forgetting curve so after several years we tend to uh, forget what we were doing what we were using uh, who we were collaborating with so knowing this we should uh, provide uh, tools in order to catch up much more easily one of the best uh, tools and uh, proven in many other websites is a dashboard a, a user center space this is not new but it would really improve editors uh, life uh, when they haven't been active uh, for some period 
it could include uh, page creation stats, uh, white list, uh, um, some research to follow activities from the communities. A dashboard would be something that would be useful uh, for all different profiles in order to personalize uh, based on their needs. With these measures, with these uh, different ways, we could improve uh, user experience. And, uh, and I think that uh, by creating a, a community experience role, we would really facilitate it because uh, we would have someone that would, uh, would represent newcomers, would represent users' best interest in the consensus de decision making, which is the, uh, where uh, decisions are really taken uh, and where it matters. And they would ensure communication and, and follow uh, stats and communicate them ac across the communities. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, to hear your ideas, uh, to really understand uh, what, uh, how this could be implemented, uh, who, should be, uh, um, who should I talk to, and, um, and really uh, how this should start. Thank you very much.